Okay, we're at a very famous site in Peru called Machu Picchu, which of course is known all over the world. And standard academia will state that Machu Picchu was constructed over the course of maybe 30 years, 100% by the Inca civilization. But what we're going to see is that the Inca, in fact, discovered an ancient megalithic site, and they built on top and around it, and the evidence should be quite obvious. So this is standard Inca construction. You can see stones simply stacked upon stones. These are agricultural terraces located, and it's likely that 95% of Machu Picchu was constructed by the Inca, but around a core which is megalithic in nature and had to have been made using some forms of high technology. The Inca were a Bronze Age culture and the stone that was shaped here is granite. Granite is much harder than bronze and so this is where we'll see the dis uh, distinction between relatively simple Inca construction and much more complex megalithic. Megalithic simply means large stones but in this case it's also indicating precision of construction beyond the ca capacity of the Inca people. So here we have an Inca period staircase. Again, it's simply stone on stone construction with uh, mortar made of clay as a filler. And so almost anyone could do this kind of construction if they had an, enough people and enough time to do. But then we have anomalies like this rather big stone that weighs probably two tons uh, that you see in the middle of the picture. And that appears to have been shaped using a form of technology beyond the capability of the Inca. And it appears to have fallen down from another structure higher above because it doesn't make sense that it is simply sitting there. And here we have some quite elaborate work. This uh, was done by the Inca people. There you see pretty close contact of stone upon stone, but not the level of precision that we're going to be looking at in future photos. So this is the pride of the Inca. This is their finest craftsman at work, creating a series of fountains near the core. And then we have this. And what you can see is very rough construction on the left and much finer construction in the center and on the, on the right. Very little of Machu Picchu was ever reconstructed uh, post-Inca times. So it's believed that the Inca abandoned Machu Picchu around 1535. And so uh, during the time that it was rediscovered, by Hiram Bingham III in 1911. To the present, very little restoration has been done, and that's the important thing to look at when you go, is to ask the guards and the guides, when you see a mix of construction like this, ask them if it's been reconstructed since 1911 or not. And if they say no, then you're looking at a time capsule. You're looking at what Machu Picchu looked like at the time of the abandonment of the Inca people. So especially something like this, you see stone on stone construction, very tight fitting, any gaps that are present, like here, that was from a catastrophic earthquake that we now know happened before the time of the Inca. It was from east to west and it pulled the ancient megalithic structures apart. If it, uh, if it had happened during Inca times, then the whole city more or less would have been destroyed. Because again, the Inca construction technique is stone upon stone with clay to fill in. That's a very weak way to build, but that was the level of the Inca technology at the time. Then here, once again, you see where the wall has been pulled apart and super tight fitting blocks incredible precision. You can't fit a human hair in the joinery. 
So this is part of the megalithic earliest construction of Machu Picchu that the Inca found. And here again, you see the outcrop on the left is the bedrock itself, shaped quite smoothly. That could uh, not have been done with bronze tools, and the Inca did not have tools harder than that, except possibly some meteorite hammers. And then on the right side again, incredible precision. So this is more evidence that uh, Machu Picchu predates the Inca, and actually the name in itself gives us a clue, because Machu means ancient, and Picchu means mountain. So that means the ancient mountain. And why would they call it that? It's likely because the mountain in behind, which is where they did 100% of their work, we see no megalithic work there whatsoever, it was called Huayna Picchu, which means the young mountain. So it looks like the Inca were distinguishing between the ancient structures they found and then the structures that they made. So again, some of the key stuff or key knowledge and information comes from the Inca language itself. And we find that in other locations. If you go to Egypt and you learn what the earliest names of some of the structures are there, this is from the Suf language. This is pre-Islamic. And some people still speak the language and interpret it to this day. You'll see that the ancient name describes the structure itself. And here again, you look at the work on the left, very tight fitting stone, and the work on the right, very rough. Again, this was not reconstructed uh, from 1911 onwards when it was made famous by Hiram Bingham. And so this is again a time capsule showing us much older work on the left and much younger work on the right and above as well on the left. You see the difference between that peaked roof on the left hand side and then the wall below it. Almost night and day in terms of technology. And here, the wall on the right versus the wall in the middle, which is shorter, and then the work on the left, and then the terracing system further left and above. The work on the right and center left, far superior, but also the work on the center left, if you look at the top two rows, you'll see that's very rough work. So that is Inca reconstruction or addition to a megalithic building they found damaged by an ancient cataclysm. And again, we're dating that ancient cataclysm not only prior to the time of the Inca, but most likely from the end of the last ice age, some 12,000 years ago, because other megalithic sites that we find around the, the world, like in Egypt, we again see megalithic work, but we also see catastrophic damage. So an ancient global cataclysm that affected the entire planet, and the only real evidence we see are in the megalithic structures that are still present today. Any other culture that was not as sophisticated, <clears throat> all evidence of them would have been wiped out. But luckily for us, these super stone megalithic works were so tightly fitted together that they could withstand, to some degree, earthquakes. And this is just another uh, close-up. Again, the very rough work on the right, the fine work on the left, and the gaps caused from the east to west earthquake. These structures are basically earthquake-proof, so that means that the earthquake would have to have been at least a 9, if not 9.5, on the Richter scale. Again, if that had happened during Inca times, the whole city would be gone. And here again, you see the lower courses here, superior, above, inferior. On the left, still very tight fitting. This wall down here, inferior, and to the left hand side, inferior as well. And in, in the back, very tight fitting stone here, and then rougher work above. 
and places where the actual reconstruction has been done uh, during recent times, as in from 1911 to present, the workmanship is actually even worse than it is during the Inca time. So we can't negate that the Inca were careful craftsmen, but modern craftsmanship is actually inferior to what we find. We also find in the modern work uh, power tool marks like angle grinders and saws. And so uh, we can find, in fact, three different levels of technology, three levels of building, the pre-Inca megalithic, the Inca, and then modern reconstruction. This is another great example of, of Inca work. You see a series of water channels. This is a series of pools that go down and down and down in the core part of the city. Um, these were ritual baths or baths. And the workmanship, though it looks really good in the channel, if you put your fingers in and run them back and forth, you see irregularities. So this was simply careful work carried out during the Inca time period. And again, it shows that the Inca were capable of quite good work at locations that were ceremonially and spiritually very important to them. And even more dramatic. On the left-hand side, you see very rough, uh, rough construction in front, incredibly precise construction. Again, the gaps between the stones in the center and right were from the ancient earthquake. And then on top, again, we see the top row of smaller, rougher stones added by the Inca. And this is the same location. This is called the Temple of the Three Windows. Every stone is of a different shape and size. The mountain in the back on the left-hand side is Huayna Picchu. Again, that means the young mountain. So all works there are Inca, but in the core of Machu Picchu, that means ancient mountain, that's where we have these very odd looking structures uh, that look also like they never had roofs on them because there's no evidence of any roofing and Machu Picchu gets a lot of rain. And so these seem to be open spaces, which is very odd because the Inca were meticulous at making peaked roofing and then lashing timbers, and then thatch in order to make their buildings waterproof. Also on the left-hand side, you see the lower course is of megalithic stone, and then above, much rougher stone, and loose fitting, and the upper area we know from the local experts and guides that that is Inca period. And this is just a more detail of the Temple of the Three Windows. And you see every stone is a different shape and size. One thing that would do would be it would make it relatively earthquake proof, but to construct in this style is kind of crazy in some ways because the amount of effort involved to do that would be horrific in comparison to simply cutting evenly shaped blocks and stacking them one on top of another. So this would appear to have been quite easy for the ancient megalithic builders to do and obviously would have utilized forms of lost ancient high technology. And even more detail here, the interlocking nature. And then in the window, again, on the bottom, you see very rough construction on the first and second level, a very roughly constructed staircase then tight-fitting blocks, and then on the very top, very loose-fitting. So the tight-fitting blocks are evidence of the first culture, and all the rest of it is Inca. And that's why these locations are very complicated, not simply here at Machu Picchu, but also in the city of Cusco and other locations such as Sacsayhuaman, Oyente Tambo, and others. And even more dramatic is this is a three-sided building and the right-hand side has sunken down by two feet or more into the ground. And again, I was there with a geologist from the United States 
and she said that would be an earthquake of a huge magnitude that caused the right-hand side to sink in the ground. It pulled the megalithic wall apart that would originally have fit perfectly together. And um, if this had happened during the Inca time period, it would have destroyed and flattened the rest of the city. And she said this site by itself is showing you, A, that there was an older megalithic construction, and B, that it was struck by a massive cataclysm. And this is just detail of that. Again, you see where the wall was pulled apart. The right-hand side has sunken down. The stones originally fit perfectly together. And that stone, that giant block there, weighs somewhere in the region of 40 tons. In terms of uh, structure and foundation, there's no reason why the Inca would have bothered with something like that. But whoever originally did this work did it simply because they could and because they wanted to do it this way. Very sophisticated planning, very sophisticated cutting, very sophisticated locking stone together. And this is the left-hand side. So you can see it's still intact. The north-south axis, all the stones fit perfectly together. The east-west, which is here, is pulled apart. And so this photo shows us that the earthquake happened in an east to west uh, direction. And we also see this at other ancient sites in the area, such as the city of Cusco, which was a megalithic city found by the Inca and then rebuilt, again, east to west damage. Also at Sacsayhuaman, which is above Cusco, east to west damage. Oyente Tambo in the Sacred Valley of Peru, east to west damage. And the more you look at these places, the more you see that in each of these locations and others, but especially Sacsayhuaman, Oyente Tambo, and Machu Picchu, they found a megalithic site, and they were so impressed by what they found that they decided to do their own construction there as well. And these went uh, from being wonders and awes to being sacred temples of the Inca people. They were clearly in awe of whoever had first been there. And they obviously recognized that someone had been there. So another problem we have is with the Spanish Chronicles from the 16th century, their awareness wasn't very great in terms of being able to distinguish the difference between the megalithic and Inca work. And most academics to this day simply say that the Inca built all of this stuff from scratch. But if you bring an engineer and or a stonemason to these locations, they will simply tell you this was done by two different people at two different times using two different types of technology. And this is another display once again of the interlocking nature of the megalithic work below, the gaps caused by the earthquake, and the much rougher work at the very top. Now this is curious, this is the bedrock, and this is actually a sundial. It was likely done by the Inca, but it may have been older. But it works as a sundial to this very day. And it's just one of those little details that uh, most people don't even look at. <clears throat> because Machu Picchu is a very complicated and huge location. And most people simply visit for about three hours. So it's impossible to take in all the nuances and details of what you see at uh, Machu Picchu and the other ancient locations. And here, this is, could very well be an example of the earthquake proofing system. You see the three stones in the center. It is possible that they were made smaller on purpose so that if there was an earthquake disturbance, they could move back and forth and even up and down to some degree, taking the pressure off the larger megalithic blocks. And because they were able to move, it's quite likely that that capability of movement meant that the megalithic larger blocks would not crack or break or lose their, uh, their strength. And so this gives you an overview 
of much of Machu Picchu. You see the terracing above. That's all from the Inca time period. And then below, you see what they call and what likely was the quarry. So that's where most of the stone for the Inca period construction, that's where it was taken from. On some levels, the Inca would utilize the difference in temperatures that happen, especially in winter time. It is quite possible that during the freezing times of the winter, what they would do is boil water, and then they would wait until nightfall, and then pour the hot water on the stone, and then it would crack because of the, of the difference in temperature, and the next day they would simply gather the stone that was broken off and use that in the construction of the different terraces, and then night after night simply continue that process, and that's why it's relatively messy looking, uh, because they didn't have the capability of cutting stone as we do in a modern quarry by taking layer by layer. It was easier for them to simply utilize the difference in temperature to make the stone crack, and then in some cases put in wooden wedges to break the stones up even more so. And here, a magnificent terracing system done by the Inca. Again, technically not that sophisticated, but an incredible amount of work. There was enough terracing on Machu Picchu to feed quite easily about a thousand people. So it's probable that the number of inhabitants at any one time at Machu Picchu was about 900 to a thousand people, and they could seal the city off and not allow outsiders to come in. And that was part of the function of Machu Picchu was it was a secret location only for the nobility of the Inca. The outsiders didn't even know that it existed, and that's why the Spanish conquistadors never found it, and the local people, <clears throat> in fact, also likely never knew it was there. So this is kind of curious. Uh, this is one piece of stone with three steps. This may be an example of the megalithic work, or it could be the work of some of the finest stonemasons in uh, the Inca world. But we'll see lots of this um, bedrock shaping, most of which was done by the megalithic builders, and to some degree later on by the Inca themselves. And so this is what's called the Intihuatana, or the hitching post of the sun. It is a megalithic construction. <clears throat> the wall in behind is also megalithic, with Inca repair on top. And the Intihuatana is, in fact, the top of the mountain itself. It is high in quartz content. And so that's why, uh, to some people, they call Machu Picchu the Crystal City because energetically it is still very powerful to this day because of the amount of quartz content in the stone. All of the construction of, of Machu Picchu was done with the stone from the mountain and why its original location was chosen <clears throat> by the um, megalithic builders is completely unknown. But it's clear that the Inca found it and then built there. And then this is another profile of the Intihuatana, or hitching post. Some people say that it was used as a marker for solstices and equinoxes, but it's more likely that it was used as an astronomical calendar and was used every day as a way of accounting and uh, monitoring the growth of the different crops. That way they could do comparisons between June 21st of 1532, and the same day of a different year. They could see how different crops were growing based on utilizing this calendar, and that's why they were so successful at uh, agricultural production. And this is a curious aspect of, uh, of the Intihuatana. Each of the four corners point to a mountain. So in this, uh, in this case, one of the corners is pointing to Huayna Picchu in, in the background, and there are some stories that, in fact, on each one of these mountains on top, there is another hitching post. 
and simply another view of, um, of the complexity of the Intiwatana being cut straight out of the bedrock itself. And more of Machu Picchu. This is basically all Inca period construction, except here, very fine fitting stone. So the Inca used that as the foundation for their construction. Why take down something <clears throat> that is incredibly solid when you can utilize it and build on top of it? And then here, very rough work on the bottom, and then the bedrock itself here, and then super tight fitting stone on top. This is the so-called sun temple, which the Inca used as a sun temple, but whether that was what it was originally built for is unknown. And more kind of odd constructions that we find at Machu Picchu. Super tight fitting organic construction here. These strange steps that nobody can figure out. A supposed royal tomb inside where no body was ever found. So that's a problem we have when archaeologists state that something was of a specific function. If this was a tomb, then why are there no burial artifacts inside of it? So you can't simply name something something unless you have evidence that that was its function. And another photo of the incredibly precise nature of the Sun Temple, uh, megalithic work on the left, and very crude work on the right here. And just in detail, again, super tight fitting stone, and then on the top two layers, you see rougher work. So that is Inca rebuilding in order to make it look the same as the work below. And this is also a dead giveaway. You see the beautiful um, tight fitting stone on the right hand side, much rougher on the left hand side. The doorway is quite precisely constructed. The stairs are quite rough and the work above the doorway and in behind is inferior. So again, the Inca found the ancient tight-fitting work and simply utilized it to use it for their own particular function. And here again, you see in, in the front, super tight-fitting work, right-hand side, super tight-fitting work, and much rougher work above and in, be, in behind. There could be no evolution of rough work to fine work <clears throat> over the course of 30 or 25 years. So here we're seeing more and more evidence of ancient work and more modern. And then again, the gaps are almost exactly the same east to west. So this indicates a major earthquake at this location. And here, tight fitting work up to the halfway point, and then rougher work going up. And then the lintel was from one of the megalithic structures and was utilized and added in there, because if you find the stone there, you would use it. Why quarry a piece when it's already there? And this is the interior of the Sun Temple. Again, you see the fine quality of workmanship here, much rougher work with filling in there and then the top two rows being added during Inca times. Uh, the bedrock in the center has notches and things cut into it, which indicate the winter solstice. That was probably done by the finest of the craftsmen during the Inca time period. But one of the key things to look at is you see the solid construction of this and then the filling in there. And this is just in more detail. Very fine workmanship, pulled apart by an earthquake, and then the bedrock here cut like that. And here we have other indications just to show you. There we have the megalithic work here, and the rest of it is Inca. So the more you look at this stuff, the more your eye becomes tuned into distinguishing between the 
older megalithic and the more relatively modern Inca. This is called the Temple of the Condor. It's an Inca construction. On the left-hand side, you see that semicircle, which represents the white collar of the Andean condor. The little nipple shape, or almost fingernail shape, on the left <coughs> is the beak of the condor. And this is an Inca construction, uh, a temple dedicated to the Andean condor, which also represents the higher self. And this is just it in detail. Again, the semicircle in lighter stone indicating the white band around the neck of the, um, the condor and then the head and or beak inside. Technically not profoundly well done, but the main question is what was the original function of Machu Picchu? We don't see any <coughs> ceremonial structures necessarily. We don't see artwork. Uh, so it's like in places like Egypt, we see pragmatic form and function in the earliest construction. And then during Inca times, we find um, a lot of ceremonial work, a lot of artwork and stuff like that. So here, this is all Inca work. They utilize this giant stone as a foundation and then built in a relatively crude manner above it. And contrasting with this, again, the first half level, very finely done. The upper section, quite a bit cruder. So early work at the bottom, Inca work above. And these two circles were likely made by the Inca and used by them as ways to do astronomy. They would use them to study the star patterns and chart the movement of the stars at night. There's also a possibility that they were actually corn mills and they could have had actually both functions. In the daytime, they could have been used for grinding corn and then at night be used by the astronomers for mapping the heavens. And that's just a detail once again. Uh, with the megalithic stuff, we, f we find uh, such incredible technical precision that you put your hand on the surfaces and move them and you feel the preciseness of the structures. These are roundish, but not completely round. And so they're probably Inca work and not the earlier megalithic work. And here, more evidence of the Inca. This is walking into the Temple of the Condor. And again, you see the relatively rough work on the left and right hand sides. It's possible that there, that small wall section, that might be the earlier megalithic, but some of the Inca work was actually quite sophisticated, so there's no necessarily cut and dry distinct, uh, distinction between uh, Inca and megalithic work, and that's why the whole study is very complicated, and that's why I've been to Machu Picchu 68 times so far. There's always more to learn. And so here, again, very fine or relatively fine craftsmanship in the lower section and rougher on top and above. And once again, tight fitting on the bottom with rougher above. So you can see that the megalithic complex at Machu Picchu did sustain some damage during the, uh, the great earthquake cataclysm um, it wasn't completely earthquake proof, <clears throat> but um, still astonishing craftsmanship and unknown who the original builders were. And another example, very fine work on the bottom, much rougher work on top. Massive slabs on the bottom especially the, very, the one on the very bottom, that's probably 10 tons, and then much cruder work above that. And here, once again, you have stone interlocking into the bedrock, and then cruder work by the Inca on top. The megalithic builders appear to have used the natural landscape, so the stone on the left is actually the bedrock itself. 
There's almost like a seat that's been carved into it. Uh, that was probably done in megalithic times. And once again, the Inca, not wasting space, would utilize the entire area. And here again, super tight fitting stonework in the area of what's called the Temple of the Sun, which with rougher work on the very bottom. And here too, the gateway, beautifully constructed, and then the wall that butts into it, and the wall on the right-hand side, much cruder. So from inheritance to construction. And they say that this is how the Inca actually did the, uh, the quarrying work. That they would take bronze wedges, which actually cannot penetrate granite, and then they would make these depressions, and then at night they would put wedges in, and then boil water and pour the water on the stone, so that then the wood would expand and produce a crack. And uh, in theory, it could be this, but what you're not told when you go to Machu Picchu is that, in fact, this example was done by Russian archaeologists in the 1990s. So this is not an example of what the Inca necessarily did. This is what the Russian uh, archaeologists believe was done during Inca times. And again, super tight precision that you can see on the left-hand side, and then reconstruction here on the right-hand side. Beautifully shaped stones. So that's an example of a wall from the earlier period falling down, and then the Inca rebuilding it and having to fill with clay mortar because they couldn't get the stones to fit perfectly back together again. And then this staircase is relatively crude. You can see the, the uh, gaps in the back. So this is another Inca addition to possibly uh, megalithic lower construction. And simply an overview of Machu Picchu. This shows you the majority of what the city looked like. There are also many terraces that go, go down the left-hand side and go down the right-hand side. And this is a view from just above the quarry. So Machu Picchu proper is in the foreground, Huayna Picchu, the so-called Younger Mountain, in the background. And some people think that this is the profile of a human face looking upwards. It's probably natural uh, in terms of its shape, but some people bel believe that it's an artificial construction. And it's up to you to decide what you think of that. And then here, this shows you, again, Inca period, 100% Inca period construction, very highly peaked roofs because of the, of the amount of rainfall that occurs here. It rains almost every day, and it's located about 7,000 feet above sea level in the very high area of the Amazon jungle. So the temperature is almost always the same year round, more or less, somewhat colder in the evenings in winter. And uh, this is Inca construction as compared to this. That's one solid piece of stone. You see all the shapes, the shaped steps coming up on the right hand side. And for those that are interested in energy or dowsing, there is a, uh, a line or energy line was re recently measured by a guest on one of our tours. And he said that that energy line goes from the megalithic core through this stone all the way to Cusco. So for those of you interested in uh, crystal energy and vibrational energy and dowsing, things like that. This could be very significant to you. And here again, megalithic filling in, bedrock on the right, beautiful work going all the way up except possible repair at the bottom. Uh, people say, say, why would there be repair at the bottom? Well, if there was a major earthquake, sometimes the lower sections will pop out. It's not necessarily the top parts fall over. And that's what we also see when we go to Cusco. We see a lot of megalithic work where there are very small stones used in the construction at the bottom because uh, damage happened at the bottom. 
In some ways, it's also believed that the megalithic builders put smaller stones in the bottom so that they would act like uh, <clears throat> shims for earthquakes. So the wall would shake, the smaller stones would pop out, the wall would settle a little bit and actually become stronger, and then the shims would be put back into place again. And another example of the, uh, the pre-Inca megalithic work, most of this, then on the right hand side, you see uh, inferior construction, uh, other pieces of stone are missing, so they're likely victims of the ancient earthquake that were never put back into place, to some degree because they were too big for the Inca to pick up and move. And another staircase carved into the, the uh, granite bedrock, whether it's from the Inca time period or earlier unknown, but the stones on the left-hand side were obviously added in by the Inca. And then this is another example of pure Inca construction, a lot of terraforming that went on. So it's not to say that the Inca were primitive. Uh, this would have required thousands upon thousands upon thousands of, uh, of man hours to shape each one of those terraces and to make, uh, make the stone walls. Very little damage has ever happened to Machu Picchu since the time that it was rediscovered in 1911. And that shows you uh, that the Inca craftsmanship was actually really quite good for that time period. And another view of mainly Inca work. Notice again that the surfaces here are, are flat and in contrast to the mountains in behind, which are all domed. So I think that what happened was the, the first builders, the megalithic ones, came and they basically sheared the top of the mountain off using some kind of ancient technology. And the Inca took advantage of that in order to build their, their terracing systems. And here, another staircase cut into the bedrock with a, a relatively crude Inca wall of a building on the right-hand side. Again, two more of these uh, circles that were used by astronomers. Uh, this whole piece is actually in the shape of a llama. Uh, the llama, of course, a very sacred animal to the Inca and also one of the constellations of the Inca is called the Lama and the Baby, and this is thought to be a portrayal on the ground of what is seen in the heavens. And a beautiful uh, ceremonial bath, again, due to the level of uh, the tight fitting of the stone, this is probably a construction from, <coughs> excuse me, the megalithic times, with a bit of repair work done by the Inca. And the water actually still runs to this very day. Half of Machu Picchu's construction is in fact underground. It's the way of moving all of the water from the rainfall uh, through the mountain. And they took as much time building underground as they did above ground in order to make sure that Machu Picchu would always remain stable and there were major f uh, floods that happened in this area about 13 years ago and thousands of uh, modern homes were destroyed or damaged but supposedly not a single stone from Machu Picchu moved during that major month of flooding. Then we have strange anomalies like this, this protrusion, uh, function unknown, but then ag again you see the Superior, relatively superior construction on the bottom, the right side, the left side, this giant stone put into place. There is, in fact, a hole, vertical hole, in the center of that protrusion. It's thought that that uh, is an indication of winter solstice, that at midday the sun shines straight through the hole as a calendar indicator. And once again, the Inca construction on the right-hand side and this, in fact, is that hole. Whether it's megalithic or Inca, unknown, could be a combination of both. Could be that the knob was done by the, uh, 
megalithic builders, and then the Inca made the hole, they simply created a secondary function, which is common among the Inca and other culture. They didn't use it for whatever the original function was, but they would utilize it nonetheless for their spiritual or other practices. And then uh, more of the water channel system, relatively roughly done, so from the Inca time period. And here we have sections of, uh, of water channel, probably not in their original place. Uh, so this is, is an example of reconstruction. They haven't simply tried to rebuild the original waterways, but simply lining them up to document them. A giant stone block on the left of the uh, left hand side near that llama, which fell down from one of the megalithic structures above. Too heavy to pick up and move back into place, so simply recorded as to where it is. And the difference between the megalithic work in the back and the Inca work in the front. Night and day, right next to each other. So more of a Machu Picchu with Huayna Picchu in the background. Once again, a very big site, very complicated, well worth spending as much time as possible to study. And here again, you see a very large megalithic block on the left, and the rest of what we're looking at, more or less, is Inca time period construction. And here, mainly Inca, but if you look uh, on the left hand side where the person has the yellow windbreaker, that could be a section of megalithic wall from the uh, early builders time and then inferior work added on top and some of these lintels again were probably recycled from the older megalithic builders and utilized because of their size and high quality of workmanship and as we start to move out of Machu Picchu, this is looking back at the main area of construction. <clears throat> Multiple levels of building. The megalithic core is actually over here on the right hand side. It's the center um, focus point and all of Machu Picchu was constructed around it. And contrasting that with the uh, superior work uh, the megalithic builders, again, the stone being pulled apart during the ancient cataclysm. And <clears throat> as you look through the doorway there, the window, you see the upper two layers are inferior to the ones below. So that's Inca reconstruction, as well as the stonework on the left-hand side. You have different shapes and sizes fitting in. And this is looking up at the Intihuatana, or the hitching post of the sun. Inside that enclosure where all those people are standing, that's the highest point of Machu Picchu. Normal place to have an astronomical observatory. And here we see part of the foundation, uh, almost all Inca work, and it shows that they built quite far down underground to make sure that water would travel properly due to all the excessive rainfall that happens in the area. <coughs> And what's left of a megalithic wall on the left, and then an Inca construction on the right. And this is what Machu Picchu looked like in, 19 <coughs> excuse me, in 1912. First photographs ever taken, once the foliage was being removed. Another photograph of how it was found, 1911, 1912. This is the megalithic core, that is the sun temple in the background. And the three-sided structure that we saw earlier, that's the beautiful uh, example of the megalithic work. They had to dig down more than two feet to find the actual foundation of it. And again, these astronomical circles here being portrayed as being for grinding corn. Again, could have been both functions. And a very early photograph again of part of the megalithic aspect 
of Machu Picchu, mainly the lower section. And then in the upper, on the left-hand side, you see the stone all pulled apart. So that's damaged Inca period work. And the man who actually did the, did the discover, main discovery, he was the inspiration for Indiana Jones. Notice that the hat is very similar. Um, actually, hit the handbag he has is very similar. And so that's where the uh, idea of Indiana Jones comes from, is Hiram Bingham III. He was not the first foreigner to see Machu Picchu, but because he was associated with Yale University and National Geographic, uh, he was able to make Machu Picchu famous in an article in National Geographic in 1913.